Hello and welcome back to another Python 3.7 tutorial. My name is Tom with Mastercard Online. Do me a favor and leave us a comment below. Let us know how we're doing with our tutorials so we can improve if we need to. Otherwise, give us some motivation. So let's get started. We're going to look at the list built-in function. Since we've been exploring lists, it's pretty important we know how to create or convert other data types into lists. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, the list built-in function looks just like that. And it takes an argument of a iterator type and we'll convert it into a list. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Let's do list. And then inside that list, we're going to put master code on line. All right. We'll go ahead and hit return. And there we go. We got master code on line. What it does is it iterates through and takes each character and puts it in its own string and separates it by a comma. All right. <clears throat> so that's what it did right there. Um, how about let's do this one more time. Let's do a is equal to and we'll just say Python like this. And we'll go ahead and do list A, and we get Python. Once again, it, each character is uh, put in its own string and separated by a comma when we call the list built-in function on that string. Uh, how about if we call the list built-in function on a tuple? I know we haven't covered tuples yet, but we'll just take a quick look at this so you guys understand what's going on. Uh, master code, and tuple is indicated by the parentheses, by the way. Uh, code and then online. All right. So there we go. We got our tuple and the comma separated. Um, so let's go ahead and do list A, master code online. There you go. It takes each one of these objects in the tuple and inserts it into a list indicated by the square bracket. So nothing really changes there. Um, how about with a dictionary? What happens if we call a list? Uh, building function on a dictionary. Let's take a look at that. So we'll create uh, A is going to represent a dictionary. So this dictionary is going to have one is going to be our key. Our value is going to be Python and then let's see two and our value is going to be Java and uh, three is our key. Our value is going to be Go go programming language uh, four and we'll use uh, Swift all right close out our dictionary so we got a dictionary right there now what happens if we call um, list build and function on that call list a and we get one two three and four all right so return the keys to us that probably not very useful um, in everyday programming because usually the keys is how you get your value the value is the important part right so how would we get the value so let's go ahead and take a look at that um, we'll do we'll do list a dot values like this and call and hit return and we get Python Java go and Swift all right but that doesn't really mean much to us if we do not put it into a or create a new object out of it so let's how would we create a new object well we just simply save it or assign a variable to represent it a dot values like that and call b and there we go um all right how about the list built built in function on um a set all right, well, let's take a look at this. A is equal to a set, and the set looks just like a dictionary. It just only has one value, though. So we'll put five uh, objects in there. And we'll do B is equal, to, or B represents a list A. And we'll call B, and we get one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so that's pretty cool, but sets have a very important um, feature to them. When we add objects to a set, they do not repeat that object. You can only have one of that object in the set. And I run into this all the time programming when I just need one object. Like if I want to, uh, let's see, um, for example, I may have multiple users uh, doing the same tutorial over and over again on mastercode.online. But I want to know if that user took the um, tutorial just once. So I'll call set and then I'll take a list 
and modify it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's do um, C is equal to, and inside our list we're going to do, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to put a bunch of numbers in here. One, 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 two, two, three, four, four, four. Uh, five and five and close out our list. All right. Now, <clears throat> if I want to get rid of all those duplicates in there, I would do something like this. D is equal to list. And then I'm going to do set C and then close out our list, hit return D. So now I got one, two, three, four, five. All right. So I got rid of the duplicates. So that's a really cool feature about the set. Um, also, how about if we call list on the range data type? Uh, so we'll do A is range, I don't know, one, two, five. All right. If we call A, we get range 0.15. Well, that kind of looks silly to me. That does not do anything good for me. How about if I print it? Will that change things? Let's call A. Nah, didn't change things. How about if I put it in a list? List A. Ah, oh, there we go. One, two, three, and four. That is very useful to me now. Now I can program with it. If you guys have any questions about the list build-in function, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a lovely evening.